27 years now. You know my voice. Nobody can save me but Christ. He saved me in a Marine Corps barracks. If we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas. And friends coming live to you from my war room here in Detroit, Michigan. You from our war room here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, here in Allen, Texas. And even though the location has changed, our Father's word never does. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way. The Lord said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Listen to me. The word of God has it right. Hey, family and friends coming live to you from my war room here in Detroit, Michigan, where we just uh, honor the spirit of the Lord on tonight and worship for sharing life in him and sharing his word with you. I just want to welcome all my family and friends all across the world, even my enemies of the cross. Uh, you all know I love you because I preach the unadulterated truth to you and I teach the things, only the things that the spirit uh, gives me through communion with him and so we just honor the spirit of the lord in, in our in the worship room in the war room on tonight and rightly so it could be called the worship room so just communing with the lord in the early morning hours here you know our custom is we seek the lord early while he may be found and so um it is um new year's day we have just uh come into 2021 and we're at about 553 Eastern Standard Time uh, here in the Midwest, and we just want to bless the Lord and honor the Lord for being up this early in the power and demonstration of his presence and certainly his spirit. And uh, as I was communing with the Holy Spirit, uh, there is um, a concern that he laid in my heart that I want to take the time to share with all of us. We are in our 14th period of sharing in our series entitled Heaven's Master Builder. Spirit of the Lord has laid a uh, concern on my heart tonight. And in one way, it is a caveat. In another way, it is a blessing. Um, it just depends on where you are as an individual in your life at present time. And moving forward uh, will determine how you see yourself uh, in the framework of uh, the concern that the Lord has laid in my heart. On this morning, listen, I'm just so excited to be in this new year um, as a believer, as a sanctified one, as a called out one, and I just bless and honor the Lord. There is no greater privilege than to serve our Father in heaven and his son, Jesus Christ, who certainly is our king. He is our master, and we just thank the Lord that he has sent his precious Holy Ghost to indwell all of us who believe in the Lord Jesus, that we might have comfort in the scriptures and that we might be taught of the Holy Ghost. Um, and so we just honor the Lord in the spirit of worship. And again, I just want to welcome all my family and friends and even my enemies of the cross all across the world. And um, so we're going to jump into the scriptures here uh, on tonight. As our custom is, I'm going to uh, give all of the uh, scriptures ahead of time. So all of you who are following with us, you can, and even those who will be watching after this, um, you can follow along and uh, pause if you need to and um, and write the scriptures down. So as if you have been following any time in our series, and certainly this has been uh, a long one, and it will continue until the Holy Ghost um, uh, allows me to understand that it is time to uh, switch um, gears. And so um, we, if, if you've been following for any amount of time, um, you know, our substratum scriptures are uh, Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 18th verse, as well as Matthew, the 11th chapter and uh, the 11th and the 12th verse there. So Matthew, the 16th chapter and the 18th verse, Matthew, the 11th chapter, uh, the 11th and the 12th verse uh, would also ask you to grab Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. We will be uh, going there after we lay our substratum scriptures and um, we are going to look at the um, 
16th verse to about the 22nd verse there. So Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, the 16th uh, through the 22nd verse. Um, and then we're going to take a look at Zechariah, the 9th chapter, the 9th through the 12th verse. We will end with Zechariah, the 9th chapter, the 9th through the 12th verse. Now, uh, Jeremiah 23, um, the 16th verse to the 22nd verse, wasn't originally um, in my spirit to address. However, uh, it came, uh, the Holy Ghost placed it in my spirit uh, when he allowed me to understand that he wanted to do a reiteration in this series of a few things so that we could keep a, a coherency and a confluence in the series uh, so that there's no misunderstanding or miscommunication on our part, all right? And so there are a couple of things. And also, so, you know, uh, these principles can sink deep into our spirit so that we can be armed and dangerous as we go forward. For our enemy walks about, uh, the Apostle Peter wrote, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so if he has to seek whom he may de uh, devour, it, it is syllogistic reasoning would conclude that he can't devour all of us, that some of us are sealed in the spirit of God to bring the word of the Lord, uh, to bring the word of the Lord to pass uh, through the prophet Isaiah when he says, when the spirit, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. And I just want to bless the Lord for that on tonight, that we are sealed in the Holy Ghost, those of us who, have, who believe, the sanctified ones, the called out ones, the ones that have come out of the word of the world or the system, the systemic thinking and word of the world, uh, word of the world, so that we can serve the Lord uh, in perfect love. And not that we are perfect, but in a per perfect meaning, perfected or spiritually mature, that we can serve the Lord in a spiritually mature manner. And, um, and we are sealed. And so if the enemy attempts to attack us, there's no weapon that he forms that is going to be able to prosper powerfully and profoundly because we are sealed by and in the Spirit of the Lord. And so I bless the Lord for all my brothers and sisters all across the world who are sealed in Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost. And we know it, it does not exempt us from attacks, but what we clearly understand is that the enemy shall not prevail against the body of Christ. And so I feel like shouting right now, I'm telling you, I, I just feel like cartwheeling up out this window, but I'm going to bench the preacher on this morning so we can, because we have a lot of ground to cover in a short amount of time. And so we want to jump right in to the teaching here. I want to begin on this premise um, that, um, and, and again, this is for, this is a reiteration. If you've been following through our series, you have heard these things before, but there are two particular points and one particular framework that the Holy Ghost wanted me to reiterate for coherency and confluency in the series and also to drive these principles deeper into our hearts. Because in the coming days ahead, we're going to need to understand these things and really employ these things as the Spirit of the Lord directs and leads us. And so we, there's a few things that we want to be clear on. Now, as we've continued in this series, and really this principle was first laid in our series, The Lord of Heaven's Armies, and if you need to go back to uh, adjust and see any of these uh, teachings in our ver video series, again, you can go on all of our platforms. We're on Facebook and Instagram at uh, Bishop G.A. Cox. Uh, you can also catch those on our website at www.bishopgacox.org, as well as obviously going uh, on YouTube at Bishop Dr. Guy A. Cox. Want to invite you to um, catch any of those platforms. Uh, I would direct you uh, to the website as well as YouTube. The website, the videos there are um, they are um, programmed off of YouTube, and uh, this is where my production team does their greatest work and adds the fireworks to the videos. Uh, they're kind of playing on Facebook and Instagram, but we just do that because we have many viewers there. But if you want to see the fireworks of the production team, I would invite you to the website or directly to YouTube. All right, having said that, there are two points we want to reiterate here. The first one is this. Uh, we So in our series, The Lord of Heaven's Armies, a principle came forth by prophetic utterance that the Lord was going to make distinctive and contradistinctive 
um, what he affirms and what he denies, what is acceptable to him and what he will reject, what is holy and unholy, you get the ideal, so on and so forth. All right, don't have the time to really go into that teaching, and so I want to invite you to go back and grab that series and take a look at it. All right, now in the manner of the, in the spirit of this principle, what I want to point out here is that I, the Holy Ghost has had me, uh, we have been very careful uh, in the demonstration of his presence and his power to make contradistinctive and distinctive who we're addressing at all times because we are addressing uh, both the unbeliever and the believer and we are addressing with two separate messages, okay? And then when we talk about unbelievers, we had to talk about the political powers versus the prophetic powers, and then we have to break down the, uh, then we have to speak to the apostate church uh, versus the nations of the world, and then America in particular and its leadership. So the Holy Ghost has been careful through me to make distinct and, and to make contradistinctive at all times um, who I am addressing so there's no confusion, okay? Also in the spirit of this thought, I want to set forth that as we go through the series and we are referring to the believer, the Holy Ghost has directed us to preach the sword, okay? As we are addressing the believer, the Holy Ghost has directed us to uh, speak peace and to preach blessing. Now, that is by deliberate design. Now, have no fear, uh, unbelievers, because there is a purpose that the Lord is allowing his judgments to come into the earth, and we have prophesied for some time now, coming into 2021, that beginning uh, January 1st of 2021 uh, until March 31st of 2021, a series of judgments, if if all the unbelievers of the nations were not, and, and, its, and their leadership, uh, and our leadership, uh, was not to repent, a series of a series of judgments would begin to enact themselves in the earth that would make the coronavirus look like a birthday party, and they would last until 2023. Now, the purpose of these judgments, and we have stated over and over, that the Lord's wrath and judgment is not a killing spree. However, what it is designed to do is to cause unbelievers to open their hearts to the concept of obeying the kingdom of God and its king, our father in heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ, who has sent his spirit to indwell all of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So, the the the, the wrath of, the, of our father in heaven, the wrath of the Lord is not sent as a killing spree, although many people will die. Uh, because of their rebellion, which the Bible says is the sin as as the, is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness, which is as the sin of idolatry. And so, if you find yourself in a rebellious and a stubborn place, um, uh, according to Ephesians the second chapter, the wrath of God abides on the children of disobedience. And there are many scriptures throughout the Word of God that address this issue: that tribulation will not depart out of the house of the transgressor, that the Lord does not hear the prayers of the wicked. Matter of fact, the only prayer he will hear is in theology what we call a penitential prayer or the prayer of repentance. If you cry out to the Lord in repentance, he will hear and he will spare and he will have mercy upon you. Other than that, you can expect that his wrath will begin to move. Now, many people have a misunderstanding of how the Lord's wrath moves in the earth realm and what his judgment looks like. And so this is why he sends his prophets forward so we can teach and so we can make clear and so we can communicate clearly what we are seeing. And again, the Lord's, uh, his wrath is not a killing spree. He takes no, the Bible says he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but he is calling all men to repentance. However, it is our choices based upon free will. And so if the Lord was to remove consequences, it would um, it would remove free will in an instance. Free will denotes free will and consequences go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause right there because many of us 
uh, don't like responsibility and accountability. And so what we want is free will without the consequences. Not understanding theologically that if you remove the consequences, that it will, anni it will annihilate free will in an instance. They go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. And so if you have free will without consequences, what you are inciting is anarchy, anarchy and lawlessness. Okay, free will without consequences is lawlessness. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in Romans the 13th chapter that the civic powers do not bear the sword. Notice forensically, forensically the language there that the civic powers... Or in other words, your court systems, your judges, your police officers, your, pro your police officers, your prosecutors, they do not bear the sword in vain. The Bible even tells all believers to be subject to these powers because those that resist these powers resist unto damnation. That is the exact word it uses forensically. So I want to be careful to give an unadulterated message here and not water down anything or sugarcoat anything. I'm saying that for a purpose because if you have a prophet, if you have a shepherd, if you have a pastor, I feel like preaching now, but I'm determined to set this preacher, keep this preacher on the bench. If you have a pastor or a prophet or a shepherd that refuses to preach the unadulterated word of God, you need to sidestep this person until the Lord can grant them repentance so that they can preach an unadulterated word. Because I am absolutely flabbergasted at how many shepherds and pastors preach a watered-down word and a sugar-coated word to their congregation, and then everybody stands back in amazement when people start dropping dead, when curses start to set in on people's lives. And let me make distinct what a curse is. A curse is not voodoo. A curse is not witchcraft from a witch or a warlock. It is is not the occult and it is not Satanism. A curse is a word that that is different than the word of God. So if someone curses you, what they are placing is a perverted word on you. Okay, that's what the textbook biblical definition of a biblical curse is. If a witch was to curse you, if a warlock was to curse you, if a witch doctor you came upon and was to curse you, if you have a prophet in the way of Balaam in the Bible in the days of old Israel was to attempt to place a curse upon you, what we are saying biblically is they are p placing a perverted word in and upon your life. A curse is profoundly and prolific nothing more than a perverted word. Now you say, Bishop, that you're trying to make that seem light. Well, it is light to those of us who believe because we know how to break curses. Okay. And the way you simply break a curse is a curse word is pronounced on you. And in the same manner that curse word is pronounced on you, you can repeat that curse word and speak a bless word in place of that curse word in your life. But the question I have for you, believer and unbeliever, is do you have enough faith to believe that when you speak that bless word, it will break that curse word in your life and break the chains of that curse word and break that devilish, uh, satanic hold stronghold that it creates in your mind for a stronghold in the mind of any person is nothing more than a dominated thought by the devil i'm going to say it again because that went over somebody's head and i want you to really get it deep down in your spirit in case you were not aware of this by way of the holy ghost i told you the holy ghost is the master teacher so let's come on and pull in close to the master teacher and become students and learn at his very mouth and at his very heart a stronghold is a dominated thought by the devil in the mind of the human agent any thought in your mind that is dominated by the devil becomes a stronghold you say bishop why is that because the devil will repeat will repeatedly bring rehearse that thought in your mind and influence you to rehearse that thought in your mind and what it does is it keeps you in a place of low valuation and low self-esteem it keeps you in a place of the oppressed and the depressed and the stressed out it keeps you in a place where you can't hear the word of god you can't see the word of God. You can't 
hear the kingdom of God. You can't see the kingdom of God. You can't hear your father talking to you. You can't hear what he's showing you. And so what happens is Satan has now cut you off from the divine love of God. He is cut. And I don't mean in actuality. I mean where you're actually experiencing it. God so, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So it's not actually that Satan can cut his love off from us, but what he can do is he can cut us off from experiencing the love of God. So even if it's present, we can't feel it. We can't see it. We can't take hold of it in our spirit. We can't be warmed by it. We can't make our decisions in it. We can't have it become the passion and the drive of our will. And so what it does, it sets us in a dark place of estrangement. Mm -hmm. which in the Bible is sin. Listen to me. In the Bible, sin is not the works of the flesh. That is sins, plural. When the Bible refers to sin, singularly, it's talking about the place of estrangement from God. Namely, when the Lord came in the cool of the garden, in the garden of Eden, and said to Adam, where art thou? And the Bible says, Adam was afraid because he knew that he was naked. And the Lord said to him, who told you all that you were naked? Now we come to realize that a spiritual principle has been violated because these two have transgressed the word of God through the perverted word that Satan gives to Eve and Eve takes that perverted word to her husband and now both of them have fallen, i.e. they have come into a place of estrangement from their father. So even though he still loves them, they are not experiencing that in present time and they are cut off even though the Lord still they are still the apple of his eye. They are not, a, they are disconnected from this principle and this reality of his love. And so now Jesus Christ has to come and be crucified and rise again. And the apostle Paul rightly says he becomes the second Adam, whereby all things are restored to mankind. But if we don't take hold of them, then there is no restoration for you. So what the enemy does is employ mental attacks against you to cut you off from the love of God, to cut you off from the grace of God, to cut you off from the mercy of God, and then it leaves your spirit in a desolate place. Oppression, depression, stress, suicidal thoughts are nothing more than the reality of the desolation of the human spirit. And when you find yourself in this darkness, and when you find yourself in this dark place, what it is indicative of indicative of and what it denotes is that you are cut off from the Lord. What it denotes is that you are in a place of spiritual desolation. But unbeliever, I have good news for you. I feel like shouting right now. If you want to break this darkness, if you want, and yes, notice I said you, if you want to break this darkness, because everybody says, I'm waiting on the Lord. No, sir, and no, ma'am, you are not waiting on the Lord. The Lord has been waiting on you to stop the foolishness and stop listening to the devil and stand up on your own two feet in the power of your spirit that he has given you. For the Bible says he's created you in his image and likeness and God Jesus said is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And so there is no time that there is anyone or anything that is dead in God. God is living at all times. He is a living God and at no time is it even possible for him to be dead. And so if we are living in God, there is no time where it is possible that we would be dead in spirit. Now it is appointed unto men to die once in the flesh and after that, the judgment. But death for us in the flesh is nothing but a separation from the body temporarily that we might go to the Father in spirit and soul. And when he resurrects us, he will resurrect this body, glorify it, change it, and our spirits and our souls will be placed back in this body. And, but this will be a glorified body where there is no sickness and death and pain and disease. I feel like shouting right now, but I'm trying to stay in this chair and teach so that we can get some understanding standing by way of the Holy Ghost. And so we 
will find ourselves where we will never die again. So we will never be separated from our bodies again. And so then the Apostle John concludes that the Lord will create a new heaven and a new earth and a new city, Jerusalem, and place us in that new city, that new heaven and earth and that new city, Jerusalem. And the Bible also says that we will not remember the things or the former world. Mm -hmm. Now that's paradise for you. Get that deep down in your spirit. And if you didn't know that, grab your Bible, pick up the book of Revelation, which is everybody seems to be afraid of. But for believers, you don't need to be afraid of this book because the plagues in this book don't apply to you no more than this coronavirus plague applies to us. Because in Psalms 91, in our last period of sharing, I showed you that a thousand shall fall at our side, believer, and 10,000 in our right hand, but it will not come nigh unto us. Only with, with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. Then it goes on to say, because we have made El Elyon, or the Most High God in Hebrew, our habitation, that no evil will befall us, neither shall any plague come nigh our dwelling. You say, Bishop, well, what do I have to do to receive that? Just believe it in your spirit. Read it. Get it down in your spirit. Confess it. Rehearse it over your spouses, over your children, in your home, as you walk about in your home, when you rise up, when you go through your day, when you're laying down, when you see your neighbor, when you see your family, when you see your brother. When you see your sister, even you, some of you might even have to tell your pastors because they don't really believe. But you want to get that confession deep down in your spirit and you let it come out of your mouth. You say, Bishop, why does it have to come out of my mouth? You know me. I'm a word man. I take you right to the word. You have to say it out of your mouth because Romans 10, 9 and 10 says if you believe in your heart and you confess out of your mouth, the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Now, if you want to be saved from the plague and every plague, not just this one, if you want to be saved from evil, if you want to be saved from the forces of the enemy, if you, as the devil is walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, if you don't want to be one that is the, one of the ones that is devoured, and clearly in 2020, we've seen a whole lot of devouring. I think we're clear on that point. If you want to be one that, that walks through that, notice I didn't say a escape that. Believers don't escape anything. We walk through these attacks. You say, Bishop, how do you know? I'm again, take you to the word. King David said in Psalm 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I feel like jumping out this window right here, uh, but but it's 20 degrees outside and I don't want to freeze my tail off, so I'm going to stay in here and teach where it's warm uh, 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 by the fire. Now listen to me. King David said, yea, though I walk through the, through the valley of the shadow of death. I like to teach the word and have everybody look at it forensically. That means with a detail and a trained eye. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's not an escapist mentality. That is not a fatalist mentality. That is a, that is a mentality of victory. That is a mentality of someone who understands and knows their God. And if we pull in another scripture, those that know their God will be strong and do great exploits. And I don't find any greater exploit than to go down through the valley of the shadow of death and come out without even the smell of smoke in your clothes. Come on, Hebrew boys, when they got thrown in the fire to go down through the valley of death and you come out and you don't even have a tooth mark. Come on and testify before uh, prophet Daniel thrown into the lion's den. I feel like shouting right now. I'm going to calm my little spirit down because I'm telling you, we have got to understand. We have got to understand. We have got to get it deep down in our spirit that we have got to come in to the word of the Lord and press in to the word of the Lord and in to the kingdom of God because his word becomes our confession and our confession through his word becomes our salvation both naturally here and spiritually in eternity, even spiritually here. This is what breaks the chains. This is what breaks the yokes. This is what breaks the chains and destroys the yokes is the word of our God. Bishop, why? Because the Bible says our father's word is forever settled in heaven. The grass withered and the flower faded, but the word of our father shall stand forever. Does anybody know the word on this morning? Because if you don't, I, I'm happy to share and to serve you with this word. So, uh, 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 continuing on our beginning premise here, we have got to understand. So be aware that a stronghold is a dominated thought 
uh, that the de is a dominated thought by the devil that is repetitive in your mind. So any thought that is destroying you and is negative is coming by the influence of Satan and he is dominating that thought by its repetitive nature. If you want to break that word in your spirit, all you have to do is begin to confess the word of the Lord. Bishop, I don't know any word of the Lord. Then I want to invite you to pick up these teachings on YouTube and all the aforementioned platforms because there's over 70 hours of teaching, fast approaching 80, and we have so much, much word for you, so many scriptures for you. And all you got to do is find one that you like and set your heart in it and begin to confess it and believe the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart that he will take that word and do what he promised you to do with it. And listen to me. You will start to see a change first in your spirit, and then the Lord will strengthen you to begin to make the necessary changes in your outer world or in your life or in your ambit of influence or in your lifestyle. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Listen, all of you unbelievers, you got to come on out of this foolishness. I'm not preaching religion to you. I'm not a religious person. I am not a religious man. I am not a bishop because I'm religious. A bishop simply means overseer. I am an overseer, not of the churches, although I am. I am an overseer of faith of faith itself. Faith meaning absolute concern. What is, who is your absolute concern? That's what we mean when we say faith. We're not talking about believing in what you can't see. Mm -hmm. Cause people who believe in magic can do that. We're talking about who is your absolute concern? Who have you placed your absolute trust in alone? Nobody beside the Lord, nobody above the Lord, nobody next to the Lord, nobody behind the Lord, nobody creeping in the back door on the Lord, but the Lord has total control and reign on your heart. That's what it means to be a believer. We don't take any other word but his word. We don't live by any other word but his word. I can already see. I'm hoping to get this in under an hour, but I can already see we might go over. Listen to me because there's a whole lot of teaching that has to be done in 2021 as we, as the Lord begins to shift the tide here, because all of you unbelievers, not many days from now, are going to come rushing into the kingdom of God. No, I am not, Bishop. I have news for you, sir, ma'am. Yes, you are, because when you see what the Lord is getting ready to allow to be unleashed in this earth, you are going to run up in this kingdom like a man running from a burning building. I Listen to this prophet. Listen to the prophetic utterance coming out my mouth. You think you're not coming, but many days from now, you will count an honor and a privilege, a privilege to run up in this kingdom, and you will be running up in here like uh, like uh, uh, Carl Lewis and 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 all those great track runners, and you know you'll be running up in here like 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 a bear is chasing you. Let me tell you something. Don't you think you're not coming, unbeliever? I'm speaking this by prophetic utterance into your life, and the Lord is showing me in the blueprint of His Word that all of you are going, you are all going to rush in here in such mass droves of harvest. We're not even going to have enough room for all of you. So right now the Lord is preparing all of the laborers of the harvest so we can meet you when you all begin to run in here. So I assure you and testify to you that not many days from now you all are going to be running in here to this word of grace that we preach, to these good tidings that we're preaching unto the meek. So you're not meek right now. Your spirit is haughty and prideful, but not many days from now the Lord's going to bring your spirit low. He's going to break that pride in you and break that rebellion in you and break that stubbornness in you. And you say, Bishop, what if he can't? Then you are going to die right there in your sin and you're going to do it immediately. So either way, you're either checking out or you're coming on. So I would absolutely, the Lord says, I hear you, Holy Ghost, and I am going to say it. The Lord says, I set before you this day, life and death, choose life, unbeliever, that you may live. All right. And so the sword the Lord has granted to us to preach to you, but to the believer we are preaching peace and blessing. So if your pastor, if your shepherd, if your prophet is not preaching in this manner and with this contradistinction, uh, believers, you need to run as far away from your shepherd as you can run because you have an apostate shepherd who is in need of repentance before the Lord before he is destroyed. And I don't want you to go down in that burning ship with him. Mm -hmm. I said it, it's super egregiously and magnanimously inflammatory, and I'm going to leave it on the table like a stranded passenger, and I'm not even going to bring uh, my beautiful car down there to pick it up. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it right on the table. See, because it's high time that we stop playing around with the Lord and we begin to obey him. That is the second point that the Lord principle that the Lord wanted me to reiterate in this opening premise. And that is he is looking for extreme and utter obedience. The, the Bible says in times past, the Lord winked. That doesn't mean he took lightly our sin. What it means is the Lord was having mercy, allowing us time to repent. Okay, and so he didn't move in his extreme and divine wrath that we see him move as the Lord of glory in the Old Testament. But don't fool yourself. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill it. And if he didn't come to do away with it, then the God of wrath is still present. So you say, Bishop, what is he waiting on? Well, I'm going to take you to the word. What he is waiting on is what the scripture refers to as the cup of iniquity and wickedness by all of you unbelievers to fill up and when it fills up and there's a series of messages forthcoming fasten your seatbelt and strap on your spiritual socks there's a series of forthcoming messages that he has already granted me to release that have been with me for some time and the Lord has granted me to release them so they are forthcoming and we are going to take a look at just how drastic this is going to get for you all as you think you are going to escape and cast off according to Psalms 2 the cords of our Father and His Christ but I got news for you if you go down to the end of Psalms 2 it says kiss the son lest he be angry and you be consumed in the way what part of those strong and extreme words are you not understanding unbeliever I am not here to pat you on your back. I am not here to be user friendly. I we are not here as prophets to be a uh, 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 seeker friendly. We're not here to stroke your eagle and pat your little head like you're a good little boy and girl. And if you just be uh, nice and not be naughty, then Santa's going to bring you a present. I don't serve Santa. I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I am trying to keep my spirit calm. But when the word gets in me and it begins to move, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. I feel like shouting right now, but I got a house full of sweet people. But if I have to shout, I wake them up and we'll go into worship. I don't even care about it because I got a bunch of believers with me. Listen to me. The Lord is looking for extreme and utter obedience. He has allowed 102 years and fit the past 50 in particular for us to repent. But since the last pandemic in 1918, we've had 102 years to repent and we experienced some revival along the way way especially as it relates to Azusa and we experienced some revival along the way especially as it relates to uh, Dr. Billy Graham and all those great preachers of that generation but I want to tell you since the 50s since that time by the time we made it to the 70s everything just started to go to pot I mean we allowed abortion came alive in the 70s I mean in the time when I was being born abortion came alive in New York City and we have taught the world right from New York City to commit abortions and just yesterday I'm reading where a nation was bragging how many abortions they just crossed and I'm sitting here thinking to myself we taught this as a country to them we taught the world to commit uh, abortion and I want to I want to absolutely caution and warn all of you unbelievers who think this is a game and think this is slick and think and you're pro abortion I want to caution you that Israel committed the same sin and the same sin the same wickedness the scripture calls the same abomination let me give you the all the way strong word of it. All of these terms apply to abortion. They It is called, see, you say, Bishop, where is it in the Bible? i tell you why you can't readily find it. Because you have to have the Holy Ghost as your master teacher to give you revelation. The word abortion is not used in the Bible, but the principle is in there. And it is called idolatry. Idolatry. And so Israel began to serve a Canaanite god by the name of Molech. And what they would do with their babies is pass them through the fire. I wish I had some help up in here. And I know I do because the Holy Ghost is with me. But I wish some of you unbelievers would open up your mouth and begin to praise the Lord and understand that you're not the smartest one in the classroom. You think abortion is new? Pick up your Bible. Abortion is nothing new. The Egyptians of 
of uh, uh, Moses' time as he was dealing with Pharaoh before he comes, leads Israel to the Red Sea, and then the Lord drowns Pharaoh and his riders in the Red Sea, and then Moses sings a song and says, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Get it down in your spirit, unbeliever, and stop playing with God our Father, because let me explain something to you. The, uh, the Apostle Paul says in Hebrews that our God is a consuming fire. What part of those words are you not understanding what is not sinking down in your spirit you are not smarter than god in heaven can the scripture says can the clay say to the potter why have you made me how are you going to sit up there and your little hasidian haughty spirit and i don't mean to be rude or offensive but how are you going to sit up there in your little hasidity and and little proud spirit little haughty spirit and then say to god i blame you say to god why why have you made me say to god this is hell on earth Say to God all of these ignorant and unlearned things that you want to talk to an infinite God who the Bible describes as a consuming fire. Some of us better get do what the Apostle Peter said and get some sober mindedness in us. We need to get sober minded. And let me tell you, many of you, many of you are not drunk on alcohol. Many of you are drunk on the highness of your own spirit. Spirit. You are drowned in the drunkenness of your own haughty and prideful spirit. You are high. I have always believed in spiritual crack because some of you are so high on your ego. Some of you are so high on your narcissistic spirits, your narcissistic way of thinking. But I hear the word of the Lord saying, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. That means your psychological state, your will, which is the seed of your desire and your desire decision-making process. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your absolute gift to God? No. The apostle said, which is your reasonable service to God. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Lord wants to get a hold of your mind. He wants to influence your mind. He wants to heal your mind because he doesn't want you conform to this perverted word. Every time you take a word outside of the word of the Lord, you are taking a perverted word. And remember what I said earlier, it's a curse. It, a curse is a perverted word. Every time you listen to these false prophets, Gupta and Fauci and these political leaders and all of this stuff, you are taking a perverse word in your mind and placing a curse in your mind. And, and then you're in your household amongst your family spewing this stuff out of your mouth, cursing your children and cursing your spouse and cursing your neighbors and cursing your extended family members and cursing your church members. Some of you are even cursing your pastor with this word going up in his office and talking about this before he's got to preach on Sunday morning. Knock it off. Flush this evil spirit down the toilet and send it back to the eternal hell which our father has prepared for. It. Listen to me. You come every time and see but the Lord says, I don't want you to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is his good, acceptable and perfect will. Listen to me. You all have got to come out of this place where you just think you are the smartest one in the classroom. Humble yourself. Bishop, why should I humble myself? I told you I'm a word man. I'm always going to take in the word. You don't have to take my word for it. Pick up your Bible and you can read it for your own eyes and make your own decision because you're smart smart enough. You're intelligent enough. You don't need me. You just need me to rehearse it in your hearing so you can go read it for yourself. Pick up your Bible and hear the word of the Lord saying to you that if you that if you humble yourself, he will exalt you in due time, both spiritually and naturally in your psychological state. You won't be depressed and oppressed and in mental illness. He will he will exalt you in due time in your body. You won't be diseased and physically ill in every five minutes and broke down and, and you're 40 looking 90 and Come on, and, and you won't be broke down in spirit, but you'll be powerful. You not only have encouragement for yourself and your children and your spouse and your pastor and your neighbor. Listen, you will have encouragement for anybody that ever crosses your path. I mean, if the dog's feeling depressed, you can preach the dog right out of depression. If your goldfish doesn't seem like he's having a good day and the cat seems like he's having a blue Monday, you got enough encouragement that you can make all of creation stand up before the Lord and give the Lord praise for 
for the Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. I feel like running up out of here right now, but I have got to teach. Listen to me. We have got to understand in this season that the Lord is looking for strict and utter obedience. He's not joking around here. Playtime is over, and we've been saying it for the entire year of 2020. Playtime is over over. There is no more playing around here. You either accept the word of the Lord or reject the word of the Lord. You accept King Jesus or you reject King Jesus. But based upon your free will, unbeliever, please understand that there are consequences for what you choose. And the concert, let me tell you, Bishop, you said since you're telling me something, what are the consequences? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, but to the rest of you, listen to me. If you reject the Lord, the lake of fire is waiting on you, according to Revelation, the 1920 and the 21st chapter, which the Bible concludes is the second death. So let me bring this revelation to you. Not only are you going to die once, unbeliever, but if you take your last breath and you are not, the, your sins are not been pardoned by King Jesus, you are going to wake up in a place of torment that you is ineluctable, ineludible, and you you cannot proceed out of it for all of eternity. That's where you're going to find yourself. Please hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. And if you can't hear the Spirit of the Lord, then hear his prophet who is endowed with his spirit. You have got to understand this. This is not a game. We are warning you. This is not a five alarm blaze. This is a 12 alarm blaze. The fire drill time is over. This is not a fire drill. You need to get this in your spirit. Well, Bishop, I'll be here tomorrow. Says who? Says you? Let me help you, my brother and sister. You say you're going to be here tomorrow? I'm going to take you right into the word of the Lord, and I'm going to show you that, listen, Jesus said we can't add one cubic stature to our, we can't add one cubic inch to our stature, nor can we number the hairs on our head. Let me explain something to you. Tomorrow is not promised. I hear everybody say that, but it almost, all, it, it, it almost becomes like a cliche. But let me explain something to you. That, that cliche is undergirded by the word of God. Jesus says, take no thought for tomorrow, for the evil is sufficient of that day. Listen to me. You might not be here tomorrow. And as I said earlier, you say, Bishop, what is my cutoff point when you take your last breath? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause right there so you can get that deep down in your spirit. I am speaking directly to you, unbeliever, by way of the Holy Ghost right now. I am taking time to speak to you because listen to me. This is not a game and it's not a joke. You have got to obey. You have got to obey right now. And you, and the first thing you say, what is the first thing I need to do, Bishop? Repent <laughs> for the uh, for the remission of your sin. You have to repent. Listen to me. And be baptized for the remission of your sin. You have got to repent. You have got to fall down on your knees and say, Lord, forgive me. I don't know what I've been thinking about. I don't know what is wrong with me. But Lord, fix me, heal me, change me. I want to be your child. I want to be your son. I am let me tell you something, all of you false prophets that keep saying we're all God's children. You clearly do not know the word of God. So as a word man, I'm gonna take you to the Bible, which says that the sons of God are those that are led by the Spirit of God. God. We are not, according to the scripture, all the children of God, but you have been listening to the world tell you that. All of you folks with this haughty spirit sitting up here talking about you're blessed of the Lord. I want to know how you're blessed of the Lord when you don't even serve him. Bishop, I go to church. That's not serving the Lord. Bishop, I read my Bible. That's not serving the Lord. Uh, Bishop, I pray every day. That's not serving the Lord. You say, Bishop, then what is serving the Lord? I'm a word man. I'm going to take you back to the word again so you can get it deep down in your spirit. Jesus said, those that love me do my commandments. Jesus said, the greatest amongst us will be those who are the servants of all. Uh huh. That means your neighbor. That means your enemy. That means your brother and sister. You know your enemy you can't stand? Mm -hmm. That means them too. Get it down in your spirit and stop fooling around with the word of the Lord and with his spirit. Listen to me. I don't mean to be rude and I'm not trying to be offensive to all of you out there, but I mean to tell you the unadulterated truth because we have got to come out. All of us talking about we're grown. You might be grown in the flesh, but many of us are, are, are children in the spirit. We have no spiritual understanding. And the Bible says, listen, in malice be children, but in your understanding be men, be women. 
men of God, women of God, listen to me. I'm going to repeat it for you again so we can get it deep down in our spirit. In malice, that means hatred, that means envy, that means covetousness, that means the work of the flesh, lying, stealing, murdering, all the rest, be children. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the things of the spirit, when it comes to being spiritually mature, we got to be men and women of God. It is high time to stop fooling around, shaking your tail in the clubs when everybody's dropping dead around you and then being arrogant and foolish enough to think that you won't be next. But I assure you, you will. Bishop, how do you know? I'm going to take you to the word of God where it says, though hand join in hand, the wicked will not go unpunished. Please hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you, unbeliever. Though though hand join in hand, mm -hmm, you might even have you might even have mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, grandparents, great grandparents who went on before before you, who were born again in the spirit. And though you're and though you're related to them, the scripture is saying, you will not go unpunished. I don't care how much they pray for you. Now, I'm not suggesting that the prayers of the righteous don't save us because they save me. What I'm suggesting is your punishment doesn't necessarily mean you're going to die. Punishment does mean you're going to get a good spiritual whooping, though. And you're going to get one in the flesh half the time, too. Let me be the first one to testify as a preacher's kid that I didn't obey the word that my father put in me. And I took some heavy beatings until I was ready to fess up and shape up and begin to obey the word of the Lord. So please understand this. Though you got some born again believers in your family, don't you think that you're going to sit up there because I will, I will bring another scripture in here in the book of Galatians. Listen, God is not mocked. You better get it down in your spirit. Galatians 6. God is not mocked whatsoever you as an unbelievers so that shall you also reap so if you don't want to get a beat down you better start sowing obedience if you don't want a spiritual whooping from on high you better start sowing some obedience here and do it strictly you better bring your fast hip out of fast hips out of them clubs and get them in the face of somebody who's teaching the word of the lord like myself and now you don't even have to leave your house so now you're really without excuse and many of you are still playing around in the club shaking your tail down uh walking around cussing and fussing, fighting, and, and, and not, and, 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 and jumping on folks, and backbiting, and gossiping, and tailbearing. Listen, you just doing all kind of foolishness, uh, being selfish, and being greedy, and being covetous, and I hate her because she, and I hate him because he got that nice suit, and that beautiful spot. Let me tell your little fast spirit something. Sit your fast tail down somewhere, and I say this with all due respect. Sit down somewhere, shut up. The Bible says study to be quiet, and learn from from the Holy Ghost, because if you don't, now many days from now, unbeliever, you're going to find yourself in a pine box, and I am so sick and tired of eulogizing people, where I got family members standing up, knowing you ain't did nothing for the Lord, no, you ain't even paying attention to him, he said, those that love me do my commandments, and the greatest of you all will be the servant of all, you know you ain't served the Lord, you have not served his children, you have not even checked in with the Lord in how long, and it amazes me how as soon as something goes wrong. We find our little spirits in the face of the Lord. But you know why the Lord doesn't hear the, the wicked's prayer? Not because he can't actually hear you. What it means is he doesn't answer you. You know why the Lord doesn't answer a lot of wicked people's prayers? It's because he knows that all you're praying for, all you're talking to him for, is so you can get a quick little fix of your problem and run right back out into the world and disobey him for 20 more years and do everything you're big and bad enough to do and pay him no attention. Well, let me tell you something, unbeliever. God is not, this is not I dream of genie. And yes, I'm going to date myself. This is not bewitched. You don't get to twinkle your little spiritual nose and God is going to show up and do what you want him to do. You don't get to rub your little hands. He's going to come out the bottle like a genie and fix all your problems. You're not in command here. You're not in control here. The God I serve, father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Isaac and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ. He is in total command. That's what the Bible refers to when it calls him sovereign. He is a sovereign king. He is the sovereign Lord. He is the sovereign God who is above all gods, who is above all kings. They don't even rate. They're not even real. They are just made up in the minds of men. They are idols. Get it down in your spirit. Did you think you were going to come against a king so great and you were just going to do whatever you wanted to do and he 
he wasn't going to answer you, how foolish you have been in your thinking, how foolish you have been in your spirit. Let me tell you something. When you disobey the word of God, you begin to set curses in motion, that perverted word in your life, and you don't even realize what you're doing. God doesn't do evil to men. God doesn't tempt men with evil. That's in your Bible also. Pick up your Bible and read it so you can know these things, so you can get schooled and get taught, so you're not in error and in darkness in your mind like the rest of these people who don't know anything. Come on and get empowered in the word of God and get some light going on in your mind. Let me tell you something. When you deal in the things of the devil, God doesn't show up to destroy you. The devil shows up to destroy you. Bishop, how do you know? I'm a word man, so I'm going to take you to the word again, and I'm going to do it all night. Baby, I got 66 scriptural rounds of eternal and infinite and exponential power to blow down anything you want to throw this way, to blow down all your thoughts and all the thoughts the devil would induce you to. I got 66 books, 66 scriptural rounds in the chamber. I'm waiting on the devil to try me. I want the devil to try me. You get on my block, devil, you already know it's a lost cause. Let me tell you something. We sitting up here thinking we're going to disobey God. Let me explain something to you. You are not going to disobey God. You are not going to sit up here and do everything that you're big and bad enough to do. The wrath of God abides on the children of disobedience. And every time you disobey God, you set a curse in motion. As you transgress the word of the Lord, what you're doing is you open up yourself to the forces of Satan and his dark angels. And let me tell you something, Bishop, what will they do? If I do this well, the Bible tells you so. The Bible says Satan has come, Satan and his forces have come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Does that sound like something, unbeliever? You want to bust loose amongst your spouse and your children? Is that something you want to entertain as your dinner guest? Is that our, do they sound like entities that you want to unleash on your friends and your coworkers that you want roaming up in your house when you sleep at night? Does that sound like something that you want to get in bed with? Does that sound like something you want to be in fellowship and in league with? Well, if it doesn't, then get your little haughty spirit down off your high horse. Get on your knees before the Lord of glory and pick up this Bible. I love what Bishop Jones said many years ago in a message he, Bishop Noel Jones I'm referring to I said many years ago in his message come forth if you don't have a relationship with your Bible you don't have a relationship with Jesus get that principle deep down in your spirit because I got it down in mind you refuse to pick up this book many of you I've gone all over the country and been in people's houses and your Bible's nothing more than a collection of dust it's a dust Oh, sitting up on your mantle, sitting up on your little dusty table that you're too lazy to dust off. And I don't even care about the table, but you could at least dust off the sacred word of God and you won't even do that. And then when all hell breaks loose in your house, because through spiritual principle and divine revelation, you have given the enemy the legal right to enter your house and to destroy your spouse and to destroy your children. Now you all of a sudden, you want to find prayer. All of a sudden, now God is supreme. All of the, but you don't really want to serve them. You don't really want to obey them. You just want to use them like a genie to fix your little problem and then run right back to your alcoholic and your drug addict ways. You want to use them to go back to your lying and gossiping and thieving and spiritual murdering ways. You want to use him so you can sit up there and ignore him for the next 20 to 50 years. Well, you better get something down in your spirit. God is not mocked, sir. God is not mocked, ma'am. Whatsoever you say. So, sir and ma'am, that shall you also reap. So if you want to sow to the flesh, the Bible says you are going to reap death. But it also says, and here's the good news for you, unbeliever, if you sow to the spirit, you will reap life eternal. Now, the question is, you have a choice to make, unbeliever. Do you want to sow to death or do you want to sow to life? Do you want to sow to the flesh, meaning your ways and how you think about things and what you and we already see you have already jacked your life up anyway or do you want to sow to the spirit and reap life eternal not just in the life to come but here and now jesus said if you lost anything for my sake and the god i will restore to you and then for all you unbelievers he said if you come unto me i will restore the years that the locusts and the canker worm the caterpillar and the palmer worm have eaten my great army which i sent amongst you listen to me god's judgment and wrath comes to tune us up and straighten us out yes it punishes us but it punishes in the way of a father's spank 
taken his soon-to-be children. You need a whooping in your life, unbeliever. You need a good old-fashioned spiritual belt whooping across your ignorant backside of your psychological state. Because some of us are so loony and warped in our minds. You need healing in your mind. You need deliverance in your mind. I feel like cartwheeling up out of here right now. But I'm in Michigan and it's freezing. And I don't want to go out there and chill my bones. So I'm going to stay in here in the fire of the Holy Ghost and in the warmth of the house to teach us. Listen to me. You cannot continue in this way. Turn your little fast self around and run into the word of God and into the kingdom of God. Bishop, what do I need to do? Just believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Subsequently, I keep giving you the formula almost every teaching I do. Subsequently, you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Bishop, how can I do that? I'm going to take you to the word of God where Jesus says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Get it deep down in your spirit, unbeliever. Because I want you to prosper. I want you to be in I want you to be in health and prosper. <clears throat> the Apostle John says, even <clears throat> as your soul prospers. I want that for you. I want it so bad I'm choking right now. I, I and, and 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 because the Lord <clears throat> wants you to understand that He is waiting on you. You keep saying, Lord, I'm waiting. No, you're not waiting on Him unbeliever. He is waiting on you, sir. He is waiting on you, ma'am, to cut out the foolishness and to get yourself over into his word. And listen, if you say, Bishop, I don't know what I'm reading, don't you worry about it, because we are sitting up here teaching. If you got questions, you can go www.bishopgacox.org. You just go in the comments section of any one of the messages and type all the questions you want, and I will answer them. We got a church phone. Call it. It's listed in your comment section on YouTube. It's listed on Facebook, if you will. It's listed in all those places. Listen to me. We got it listed for you. Call the church phone. I'll take all the time you need in the world to answer all your questions. Call me whenever you want, and, and we'll get your questions answered. Listen to me, uh, uh, because you, it, it is high time, and it is, a, it is more critical of nature than it ever has been. We're not in the last days on the prophetic timeline now. We are in the last hour approaching the last minute. You better get it down in your spirit if you haven't already realized. That's why I said it's a 12 alarm blaze. We're not joking around here. This isn't a game. Listen to me. We're not fooling around. We are trying to save souls. The Bible says, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we, we, the body of Christ, the ecclesia, the called out ones, Jesus told us in Matthew 28, go into all the world, teaching them whatsoever I command you. What I tell you in the ear, he said in another portion of scripture, preach that on the rooftops. We're going in the highways and the hedges as we were commanded by the word of God. The word of God tells us to go into the hedges and highways and compel them to come. Listen, we're going into all the world. We are, listen, the scripture says, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord. We persuade men. We are ambassadors of the kingdom and we're persuading you to come into the kingdom before it's too late. Bring your spouses into the kingdom before it's too late. Talk to them. T tell them. Tell them what the man and women, the men and women of God are saying. Show them the videos if you can, if you don't know how to talk to them. Show them the videos. It's okay. You ain't got to say. Just show them the videos. Sit down. Watch this with me. Make your kids watch it. Because the Bible says it's not the Lord's will that any should perish. Did you hear that? Let me back up and say it again. Let me rewind uh, the video and say it again. The Lord said it's not his will that any man, any man, that means any man anywhere in this world, it is not the Lord's will that you perish. But it might be your will. Oh, I said it. It's egregiously inflammatory, and it's going to stay right there. Listen, uh, you might want you might want to perish in the decisions you're making, clearly. Satan wants you to perish because I already gave you the word of the Lord where it says he's come to kill, steal, and destroy. He's walking about as a warring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's clear he wants you dead. So it's high time to obey. Now, let's go into the word of the Lord. We have set up the premise. You say, Bishop, that was a long premise. You know why I set up the premise? And I take the time to lay it out. I'm a professor and a scholar. And listen, and whenever I don't, I'll, I got 8 million questions. And most of the time, if I lay out the premise, many of those questions are answered. So I don't obey men. I obey the Holy Ghost. And he tells me to lay it out. And sometimes it's short. Sometimes it's long. It's going to be what it's going to be. And, and and I tell you, but I tell you one thing. It, it, it sure shures up confusion. No miscommunication. Nothing. And many of your questions will be answered if you just humble yourself and allow the Holy Spirit 
Spirit to speak to you, no matter how long it takes, he will give you what you need. All right, now, Matthew, the 16th chapter and the 18th verse, you all should already be there. And of course, uh, this time I've mapped out so I can get there quickly. Uh, if I don't, I'll still get there quickly, but I think it's a little easier like this. Matthew 16, chapter 18, verse is our first subscribe, subscribe scripture, and you'll see where I referenced this principle earlier. It says, And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, this is Jesus speaking, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, so we were talking about the Old Testament version of that is, is the prophet Isaiah saying, When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. All right, now we're going to switch over to Matthew the 11th chapter, the 11th and the 12th verse, this is our other substratum scripture, it says, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, that just, just doesn't mean now when Jesus said it, it means right now, 21 centuries later, even in our time, in modernity here, uh, the kingdom of heaven suffered violent, and the violent take it by force, or in other words, they attempt to launch these violent attacks, but we press through these violent attacks by the Spirit of the Lord. See, and I referenced that principle earlier as well. So listen, I got 66 scriptural rounds, and every believer does. You want to fool around with us. Listen, Jesus already showed us when, when the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness, Satan comes, and he launches three attacks against Jesus. You can read that in the Synoptic gospel there's, uh, Gospels there, or uh, in other words, Matthew, Bart, Luke, and John. Listen. And he goes out into the wilderness, and he's fasting 48, listen, and then Satan comes with three attacks, comes to him just like he did Adam and Eve in the beginning. And listen, Jesus, Jesus whoops him good, because what he does, he says, th the three times Satan attacks him from three different angles, he, he attacks him from the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, Jesus comes back and says, every time it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, he said, it is written, man <coughs> should not, uh, you um, man shall worship the Lord God and only him shall thou worship. Listen, three times Satan attacks, three times he gives them the word. He sets the blueprint for every believer that would, all the believers that would ever come after him, he sets the blueprint for us. You need this word. You see that? You need this word. I don't mean you need to read the Bible. I mean you need to read the Bible till the word is imprinted in your spirit. So that if all the Bibles were taken out of the world, out of the world, you would still have so much word to live on, you could live on it the rest of your life and guide yourself against all, the, the spirit could guide you against all the attacks of the evil one, okay? Let's get this thing deep down in our spirit. Now, the next scripture we're going to is Jeremiah the 23rd chapter, and of course I gave you, you should already have it marked, and I gave you 16 through the 23rd verse. Now listen, this is where we're going to have to pay careful attention, all right? Both believer and unbeliever. We're going to have to pay careful attention here. Because listen, believers, we got a whole lot of folks out here under false prophets and false shepherds. Mm -hmm. I said it. I know them false prophets and shepherds aren't going to like what I just said. But let me tell you something. If you're waiting on me to care, hold your breath and see what happens. I don't care at all that you understood that I said that to you. Because the Holy Ghost is talking to you right now. You need to fall out on your face and repent because you're leading his people astray. And if you don't think that's a detriment and a warning there and a caveat, then you pick up the book of Jeremiah and read about a prophet by the name of Hananiah. If he didn't die two months after he led the Lord's uh, people astray, after the prophet gave them the true word, here comes his little false prophet self. And the fact that his lineage, he came from a lineage of priests and prophets, didn't save his little tale. So let me get it deep down in your haughty spirit, all of you false shepherds and apostate shepherds and all of you false prophets. Let me tell you something. Don't you sit up there and think the Lord doesn't have your number because he does. And not many days from now, if you continue in your wicked ways, you are going to find yourself in the throes of his judgment. So beware. It's not a game. So believers, if you have family and friends going to churches and these false shepherds are not preaching what I'm getting ready to show you, then let me tell you something. You need to start warning them and snatching them up out of there. The Bible says we snatch some out of the fire. Listen, knowing therefore the terrible Lord, we persuade, persuade men. That means mankind. Listen, some of them, we even snatch them out of the fire for fear. Listen to me. We snatch them right out of the fire. You say, Bishop, how do we do that? By the word that we proclaim to them. We snatch them out of the very fires of hell 
Yes, we do, because we know the terror of the Lord. We know that the Lord has created this place for, for Satan and his angels. He did cre originally create it for mankind, but he intends to use it if we make the choice to go there. He is going to place us where we made the choice to go. Okay, so let's get this in our spirit. And I know this is an uncomfortable subject. I have people coming on and going off all the time. Doesn't bother me one bit. I know it's uncomfortable, but it has to be said because you could turn a blind eye and a deaf ear. It's not going, it's not going to do you any good. If you make the wrong choice, this is ineluctable and ineludible, baby. You're going. Okay, so you can, you can shut your ears out. You can tune all of us out. But when you get there in that day, don't think you're passing into the kingdom when you have been living like a devil and, and, and in bed with the devil all those years before you got there, if you make it that far. And that's a big if, especially in this prophetic portion of the timeline. Now, uh, Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, please hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to both believer and unbeliever. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. And translated in the New Living Translation as the Lord of Heaven's armies. Mm -hmm. That denotes that he take, takes action when his holiness is violated and it begins to fill up in the cup of wickedness and iniquity is filled as I alluded to earlier. Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. Get this down in your spirit. All these false prophets, you believers and unbelievers, even believers, if you're going to church and all of a sudden you discover your pastor's not in this vein, you better hop, skip and make a decision and, but let the Holy Ghost lead you now, but you better hop and skip and do something here. You say, Bishop, do you have a word for that? Absolutely, I do, and you do too, believer. The Bible says, mark them which cause division amongst the brethren and avoid them. Okay, let that sink deep down in your spirit. Now, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. Listen to me, they make you vain. Mm -hmm. That means you have a curse word in your mind that has, you know what vain means? It has no foundation uh, our word has foundation. Bishop, how do you know? Because Hebrews 11 and 1 tells you, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. What? The evidence that's grounding, that is your grounding and anchoring mechanism, substance. Uh, it's, it, now, um, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? That's, that's grounding, that's substance, okay, that, that is matter, that is base, okay, so our faith is not baseless, our word is not baseless, our word is set on the foundation of Christ as the chief cornerstone and the doctrine of the holy apostles, get it deep down in your spirit, believer, you should know what you believe, not just in Christ, but what you believe doctrinally, go in Acts, get in Romans, get in Corinthians, and get your spiritual doctrinal chops up, so you can be strong in the Lord and endure hardness as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, they speak a vision of their own heart. Notice where the source is. It's of their own heart. It's not of the Spirit of God and not out of the mouth of the Lord. See that? It doesn't come from his mouth. It comes out of their own heart. Their own vain imagination. Their own baseless heart that is not uh, uh, immersed in the word of God or in the spirit of God. And they speak out of this baseless place. They speak out of their spirit or their psychological state, okay, which drives to their will, which is the seed of the desire, and the desire, and then to their decision-making processes and out of their mouth. And once they profess this to you, what did I tell you earlier? It becomes... It it becomes a curse, which is a perverted word. See how it all goes together? Um, listen, the Holy Ghost is master teaching here. You better come on, get your coffee, and get in this good word of God, and taste these heavenly powers in the Holy Ghost. Listen, verse 17. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. I, t I said it, I said it, I said it. If your pastor is preaching peace right now to the unbeliever when he should be preaching the sword, you got to part ways. Because you're a pastor, if he doesn't repent, you either got to part ways, you got to let him know he's got to repent. If you can't let him know, just show him my video, say, a pastor, I think you ought to look up Bishop Cox, and he's got a message for you. And he will hear me telling him he needs to fall down on his face and repent. If you have to stop it right on this place of the, <laughs> of the teaching so he can hear me say it directly to 
to him. If he wants to call me, then I'll say it to him. If he wants to meet with me and he ain't scared of the coronavirus, I'll say it directly to his face because I want him to, I don't care about his flesh. I care about the saving of his soul. Get it down in your spirit. All you believers, if you're under an apostate shepherd and you say, Bishop, how do you know? I'm reading it to you right now. By the time I get to the 22nd verse, if you got the Holy Ghost and you say you hear the spirit of the Lord, then you're going to be clear on how you know whether your shepherd's apostate or not. Now, they say still, un listen, so he says they make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Verse 17, they say still unto them that despise me. Now, look at who they're preaching to. Those that despise the Lord. They say to the, they're not talking to us believers. They're talking to you unbelievers, you apostate church members. These prophets are telling you peace, but look at what the Lord is saying. He's not saying peace in this season right now. He is sending a sword against the unbeliever, a sword, a sword meaning judgment and wrath. It is not a killing spree. It is a tune up, a punishment so that you can open your spirit and begin to obey him. Cause let me set this principle for there is nothing that will get your spirit open faster than a little pain and suffering. That's why every time it hits one of us, we start crying out to the Lord. Uh, but any time before that, we don't say nothing to him. But when he start allowing a little pain and suffering to hit our tails, baby, now all of a sudden we find our way to his doorstep. Well, let me certify you this unbeliever. Find your way to the doorstep, get in the door, lock it, and stay your tail in there for the rest of your life. There's a good word from the Lord from you. Listen, not even sugar-coated, I didn't put no sugar or no sprinkles on it for you. No no, you don't get a powdery donut with sprinkles. It's not a Boston cream donut. You don't get any uh, a gushy and sweet center on it. It is rough. It is raw. It is like castor oil in reverse, baby. Let me tell you something. It, it tastes nasty going in your spirit. But when it gets down in there, it'll shake all that mess loose up out of you. And it'll start running up out of you. And all of a sudden, you will get some sense. You will get what I said earlier. You will become sober-minded. And you will start walking with a pep in your step. And you will start walking with a holy confidence that you know the devil can't attack your house and prevail, that you can't attack your spouse and prevail, because you know how to put the word of the Lord to your spouse, the word of the Lord to your children, the word of the Lord to your finances, the word of the Lord to everything that belongs to you, both spiritual and natural. You'll know how to put the word of the Lord to your spiritual power, to your spiritual understanding, to your understanding and your revelation of the word. You'll know how to put the word of the Lord to every aspect of your life, both spiritual and natural, and then what you'll be doing is walking in the divine creativity and providence of the Lord. You'll be walking in true divine blessings and not in your perceived blessings. I am so sick and tired of all you rappers and all you uh, uh, musicians, every last one of you Hollywood actors and all you politicians, all you be, all the Lord is blessing me and you sitting up there singing all kind of nasty stuff and shaking your nasty hips and you got nasty lyrics and you got nasty thoughts and you got evil thoughts and hateful thoughts and I, I like my family, but I hate their family. That is not of the Lord. It is clearly of the devil. And as I told you earlier, if you engage in the things of the devil, you give him a legal right to your household. Why do you think we have a list in Hollywood of all those that died before 30 years old? Because baby, they gave them, when they get a nasty word in your spirit, and a perverted word, you give the devil legal access to come into your life and absolutely do everything up and to including killing you physically. You better get it down in your spirit. I'm so sick and tired of you, you all blaming the Lord for your nonsense. Let me tell you something, and I can say this because I was once you, and I participated in the same devilishment, but I thank the Lord for his unspeakable gift, that in due time, he called me out of that foolishness. I feel like cartwheeling up out of here right now. He called me out of that foolish, out of that darkness, the apostle Peter wrote in to his marvelous light. And let me tell you something, unbeliever. He's calling you as well out of that spiritual darkness and into his marvelous light. You better run up out of that darkness fast as you can. Why do you think we got all these people overdosing? Why do you think we got so much murder even in this city I am? Detroit, which was third on the murder list last year. Get it down in your spirit. Why do you think it's that anarchy and lawlessness is so rampant? It's not because the Lord designed the earth that way or he wants it that way. It comes from the deathly amalgamation of humanism and Satan 
Satanism. In other words, human beings listening to the devil and acting upon a word and then we think we're sold the smartest ones in the classroom not even realizing and I taught this principle some time ago that the devil blinds unbelievers at his will. You think you're living your life and I'm doing me and I'm living my truth. No, you're not. You are blinded to the fact that the devil has you doing what he wants you want you to do and you don't have control you say bishop how do you know i don't have control stop stop trying to live the way you live stop trying to do what you're doing and see if you can successfully do it and that's why many of you if you're honest you haven't come to the lord yet because you still think you need to clean up your life but you're clear that you can't because you're addicted and you're stuck in it well, that ought to tell you that you're not in there by your control and will then, sir, or man, that ought to tell you that you're in there by his. And if you didn't understand that, now you know, because I've made it the word of God known to you. See why I love you? Because love isn't based upon feeling. It's not based upon the fact that I know you or I sit down and have dinner and have tea and have coffee and, 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 and rub your feet with your fluffy little pink slippers on. That has nothing to do with it. Uh, divine love is that I tell you the unadulterated truth of the word of God so your soul can be saved. Get it? down in your spirit don't nobody love you greater than somebody that'll come to you and intentionally wound you with the knife of a surgeon you got all these thieves cutting you around you with the knife of a thief but i come to you with the knife of the surgeon to trim out the spiritual cancer cells in your mind and in your heart that been keeping you down and degraded and feeling like crap and low valuation low self-esteem depressed oppressed de-stressed all the stress sisters are working on you listen to me i come and tell you the unadulterated truth of the word of god because I bring a word of life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. We are, we have the word of life. We have the word of light, L-I-G-H-T. We have the word that can bring you out of death and through the valley of the shadow of death. We have the word that can bring you in from out of the darkness and into the marvelous light. I feel like preaching. I told you I'm trying to creep this preacher on the bench, but that word is so fire in my spirit. Listen to me. As we're continuing in Jeremiah, for those of you just joining me, Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, and uh, we are um, in the 17th verse. The Lord hath said, ye shall have peace, and they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. But I pronounce to you in the year 2020, which we have just exited not many hours ago, I pronounce to you that in 2021, a series of judgments was coming, that if we didn't repent, each one will be chain reactionary and worse than the one before it until we repented. This is going to run its course for the space of, the, uh, of a four-year period. We have already conducted one year. We have three more to go. Fool around with the Spirit of the Lord and think you're not going to repent, nations of the world, United States of America in particular, all of you leaders, all the way down to the back door, from the state house to the white house to the church house to your house to the outhouse. I don't care which house you pick. Everybody better fall down and repent who's not a believer and indwelt by the spirit of God and resting in his kingdom. Listen to me. If you don't understand what I'm saying right now, you are outside the commonwealth of the kingdom of God and you need to rush on in here and you need to do it yesterday. Verse 18, for who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Question mark. Let's notice this for Wednesday. God through the prophet Jeremiah is asking a question now. He's asking for who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you who, believer, because again, if you got an apostate shepherd, I want you to know how you have one. Now, notice the questioning. God has asked the question like a good prosecutor. OK, for who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and had perceived and had heard his word, question mark, who hath marked his word and heard it? Question mark. Behold, verse 19, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. Uh-huh. Like the coronavirus. Get it in your spirit. Here is the word of God. 16 centuries it took to compile this scripture. If you weren't aware, 16 centuries. And you fools want to tell me man wrote this Bible? You are out of your mind. Man penned this Bible, but he did not author this Bible, baby. He's not the source of God's word. God is the source of his own word. And 
and he says, I even place my word above his name. Come on, somebody know their Bible. All you believers know that this is in the word of God. God placed his word even above his own name. Get it down in your spirit. There is nothing more precious and more powerful in this earth than the word of God. And if you want to break every curse in your life, start confessing the word of God in your life. Unbelievers, I want to tell you, you need to start writing these scriptures down and posting them on the doorpost of your house. And I know when they come in, they're going to call you crazy, but they need a good dose of this spiritual castor oil themselves. And when they see it, they might snicker at first until their child is laying up sick in the hospital. They might they might snicker at first until their spouse is crippled and can't walk. They might snicker at you first until the dog is put down. They might snicker at you first until somebody they love and close to them, a coworker, whoever it is, is all of a sudden ailing and diseased and afflicted or on their deathbed. And baby, then all of a sudden, I assure you, they're going to lose that snickering and wipe that little smirk off their face and they're going to be glad that you had them scriptures posted up there. You don't let anybody listen to me, believers. You don't let anybody make you ashamed of the word of God. Apostle Paul said in the book of Romans, I'm not ashamed, right in the first chapter, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Believers, if you're feeling ashamed, don't you. Let me give you a word of encouragement. You get this word down in your spirit and you get it down into the day where the word of the Lord says the righteous are as bold as lions. I feel like preaching in here. I'm telling you, my spirit is fired up. We are as bold as lions. And do you know what lions will do if you get in their path, especially if you start touching their food? Let me tell you something. What a lion. You get in the path of a lion, you start touching his food. Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You get in my way, baby, and you start playing with my spiritual food, and you're liable to get yourself chewed from limb to limb. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't mean that in a physical manner, I mean that in a spiritual manner. I'll start launching the teeth of the scripture of the word of God in your spirit. I'll start launching it in your house and launching it on your spouse and launching it on your children and launching it on your dog and your cat and your goldfish in the bowl and your neighbors. I'll start launching the word of God until everybody up in that house is saved. You better understand how powerful we are and who you're fooling with. This is not a joke. We know how to launch these scriptures, baby. I'll launch some scriptures that'll make everybody un uncomfortable in the room. You you say, Bishop, can I get a ta can I get a test drive? I'll give you a good test drive. You open up your Bible and start reading Psalms 91 in the middle of your house when you got guests and see how uncomfortable all them demons get. They will run up out of your house. Your kids ain't acting right. Your husband ain't acting right. Your neighbors ain't acting. Your guests at your at your uh at your dinner, your gathering, and your get together are it, it, uh, they aren't acting right. You get the Bible and open it up and start reading Psalms 91. You get your Bible and open it up and start reading the gospel of John at the first chapter and then you get down to the glorious 14th verse that says and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory is of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth and you see how many demons start shaping up and running out of there and leave the people behind and now all your loved ones will start shaping up and acting right it's hard to do devilish men when the word of God is present it is nearly impossible when you start reading the word of God because you know what starts happening? All of a sudden, you start getting conscious that God is watching you. Well, you, some a whole lot of us need God watching us at every moment because we're some little shysty thieves and little shysty little, you know, and, and all you goody two shoes to me, I'm good and I'm righteousness. Let me give you the word of the Lord where it says your righteousness is like filthy rags before the Lord. He has concluded all of us in sin so that he can send his son to die for us so that we might have eternal life. So even you good folks ain't as good as you think you are before the Lord. Because the kingdom of God <coughs> isn't in e good and evil, it isn't in bad, and all of the rest of that nonsense, ethics and morality, although all that stuff, those principles apply in the kingdom. <coughs> the kingdom of God is set on holiness and unholiness. Bishop, how do you know? I'll preach it from the rooftops, and I keep harping on it. I know because the Lord says, be ye holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy in the book of Leviticus. And then in the, the, the New Testament version of that is follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You won't see him. You won't see him in this life or the next one. You won't see him. 
in your in your house right now. You won't see them in your life right now. You won't see them in your spirit right now and in your mind right now. It's not just in the by and by over there where the old saints were singing about. You won't see them right here and now. And many of you don't. And that's why you're unbelievers. You're not unbelievers because it has something to do with your evil acts and your sins. You're unbelievers because you refuse to acknowledge King Jesus and his word and get this powerful word in your spirit and you continue to live by a perverse word. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pause and let that sink deep down in your spirit. That's why you're an unbeliever. You're not an unbeliever because of the acts you do. You're an unbeliever because what you care, that perverse word that's cursing you that you carry in your spirit, in your mind, in other words. That's why you're an unbeliever. Get it down in your spirit. Now, back to all you, how you going to know you got old whack shepherd, how you got old apostate false prophet or shepherd working your spirit over. And let me tell you something. Some of these false prophets and shepherds can be right in your own household. Some of you got spouses with a false perverse word in their mouth. Some of you got children with false perverse words in their mouth. Some of you got parents with a false perverse word in their mouth. Oh, you don't need to hear that prophet. You don't need to listen. You don't need the Bible to live. You don't need Jesus to live this life, I tell you what, you can go at it on your own, baby, but don't you try to get up in this kingdom when you take your last breath. You just walk yourself down to the corridors of the lake of fire, jump your little fast hips in there, and burn, baby, burn forever. Because let me tell you something, God says emphatically stated, our Father in heaven, our great King is emphatically stated that no thief, no murderer, no homosexual, no effeminate, no liar, no backbiter, no gossiper, no unbeliever, no person estranged from me is going to enter my kingdom. And then I'm going to ask you, unbeliever, what will you do then? Because you don't have any power to change it. You couldn't make it in the first place. Listen to me. Verse 19. Verse, yes, behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is come forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. It started in 2020. Let me tell you, I know everybody happy new year. That's exactly why the Lord sent me on here too. Cause everybody's happy new year. And I was right with you, but I had, I had a secret word in my spirit. I had a weapon in my spirit and I knew the Lord was going to launch it. Okay. We had our happy new year. You had, you did your toes. I ha ha ha. It's all fun and games, right? Fun and games are over. I told you playtime is over. Back to work. Back to work, believer. Back to work, unbeliever. Believer, you know what our job is. That's why I'm not addressing us too much. Uh, just about the uh, false shepherd so we can help some folks get that burning building, if you will, spiritually speaking. But you unbelievers, playtime is over. <laughs> you, you got it all out your spirit. Now we got to go to work here. We got to go to work here because we got some more judgment 2021 to 2023. Bishop, I don't believe it. I don't know why, because you saw it in 2020. Now the Spirit of the Lord, and I'm not the only one, pull us all up on you to all the prophets from Bishop McClendon to Bishop Brink uh, to Perry Stone to... <coughs> uh, Lana Vassar, and, and come on, I can name them up for days. Listen, all, the word of the Lord's put the same word in all of our mouths, even the old preachers. Come on, uh, 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 Dr. Lester Summerall, <coughs> Smith Wigglesworth. Listen to me. The old preachers that came before us had the same word in their mouth. The same word from the Lord. He hasn't changed his mind. The Bible says that the Lord is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man he should repent. He doesn't change his mind. He says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What part are we not understanding? Then the, then the Apostle Paul says in Hebrews, and yes, I do believe the Apostle Paul wrote Hebrews for all my theologians out there. I hear you coming down the street. Just deal with it. Okay. Um, he allows us to understand. Listen, you know, <clears throat> He allows us to understand that our God is a consuming fire. I shared that earlier. See what I'm saying? And, and listen, so we got to understand playtime is over. We got to get serious here, okay? And we got a whole bunch of shepherds fooling around. We got a bunch of shepherds, listen, that are not teaching the unadulterated word of God, okay? Now, we're going to take a look at how you know. And listen, folks think they're going to escape, but I'm telling you, the Lord has given us his word 2021 20, to 2023, you say, Bishop, I don't believe it. Let me tell you something. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, as I started to quote earlier, it says, our God is immutable. 
That immutable meaning he doesn't change. That's what immutability means. He does not change. He does not change his mind. The apostle James said there's not even a shadow of turning in him. That means he does, there's not even the, the, the hope or the possibility, even on a nanoscale, that the Lord would change his mind from what he's already predetermined. And I, can I tell you this? The Lord's not reactionary. Many of you don't understand that either. Unbelievers, but let me share this with you. The Lord, our Father in heaven, is not reactionary. It's not like he saw the evil you were doing and then decide to do something about it. No, he knew from, from the, he knew the end from the beginning. That's what it means when we say in theology, he's omniscient or all, omni meaning all, science meaning knowing, all knowing. Okay, he's all knowing. He knew everything before he put any of us here. He knew everything, decision you was going to make, everything you were going to do. And he set in your life a series of predetermined judgments to help tune us up so we would come to him. So please don't think God is reacting to any of us. He's not. He's not that small minded and he's not that stupid. He is highly, he is infinitely intelligent. So he knew to put it in place before all of us got here. Please, let's get it down in our hearts. Believers, you already know this. I'm not talking to all of you. Uh, Miss Loretta, I see you. The Lord bless you. Miss Jennifer, uh, that's the first lady. For those of you who don't know, uh, love you, babe. Listen, y'all already know, so not even talking to you. I just want y'all to pay attention so you can you can know how, if, you got, if you're got if you under a false apostate shepherd or your friends are, you can save them from that burning building, all right? Listen, Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, we're in the 20th verse. Now, the, here's where it get. Listen, fasten your seatbelts. I'm warning you, unbelievers. Believe Believers, listen, you already know where I'm going if you know this particular passage of scripture, and you should know because I did I, I I taught in this in depth and earlier in our teachings uh throughout 2020. So listen, the 20 through the 20th verse, I'm telling you, fasten your spiritual seatbelt because it's about to get hot up in here. Okay. The verse 20 says, The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. And again, the principle is there, he's not reactionary. These aren't thoughts in his heart that just came. They were set before the foundation of the world, before any of us got here. We just don't know what they are. So that is the purpose of revelation. God knows what he's purpose. We just don't know. Uh, but the revelation is coming forward. Is it not believer? Is it not unbeliever? Listen. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. You know what that means in hindsight? Uh, listen. A lot of you are, as you, a lot of us as we approach, listen, all you unbelievers, <laughs> and even a lot of us believers, tell me you didn't consider perfectly what happened in 2020, meaning in hindsight. And many of us, I saw it all across social media. I mean, social media was burning up yesterday, and rightly so. We saw it. People reflected. Hindsight, looking in the rearview mirror. The Lord is saying, when my judgments are complete, you're going to consider it perfectly. That means you're not going to have, have any need that any of us tell you what occurred. I don't have to preach to you what occurred in 2020, because we all know what happened. We all saw the devastation. We all saw the dead bodies. We all saw young and old. So the spirit of death wasn't discriminatory in any way, shape, or form. The rest of us, many of us were prejudiced and righteous, but the spirit of death wasn't. That's for sure. <laughs> let that sing deep down in your spirit all of us let's get that deep down in our spirit many of us may have been racist and prejudiced whatever our little hang-ups are but let me tell you one entity that wasn't the spirit of death he was wiping them out he was taking them eight to 80 and dumb cripple and crazy come on he was wiping them out we know it let's get it deep down in our spirits and be sober-minded let's stop fooling around acting like we didn't co let's consider this perfectly let's consider the punishment that was met met out through our own actions of just year after year we keep ignoring the lord and ignoring his word and ignoring his prophets and ignoring his kingdom and now our cup is full and so now it's pouring out just like it did in 19, uh, 1918 and, and let me tell you something by the time that pandemic uh, ended 50 million the world over had died hello boom there it is 50 million in the world had died, and we're complaining about 1 million, and we should, because in my estimation, anybody with halfway of some sense, one life lost is too many, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, my opinion is the Lord's opinion, because I quoted to you earlier, he doesn't take death in the pleasure of any wicked person. That means all you unbelievers, he doesn't take any any pleasure in our deaths. Okay, so listen, uh, uh, <clears throat> come on. One death is too many. We're already over a million the world over. I think we're closer to two million now. But listen, in 1918, by the time this thing was done, they considered it perfectly 50 million. A reasonable uh, estimation could have been much more for all we know. 
50 million people the world over died. We won't even get into the bubonic plague. <laughs> we won't even get into the age of black death. Mm -hmm. Back a ways. We won't even get into how many died in there. See, because we think it's a game. Uh huh. We think it's a game. Four, uh, listen, almost 50 million were cleared in World War II. Six million of them are Jewish brothers and sisters. See? See what happens when we start disobeying God? Those kind of <coughs> extreme judgments break out. The Lord's not responsible. We are because of our foolish choice because we're fighting and bickering and we let and we get emotional and then we got to have an emotional discharge. That's all World War II was an emotional discharge amongst nations. Amongst national leadership. Oh, they're not going to punk us out and they're not going to back us down. So we're going to kill everybody and have an ungodly amount of collateral damage in the process. And might I remind us of this? I state it and it's in one of my writings called Remember, uh, uh, Re Remembering the Old Paths. Okay, you can go on the website www.bishopgacox.org, look up that writing. And in there what you will find is this principle. I state it by reason of the Holy Ghost, that the first seed we take in the first step we take uh, in destroying our brother, the seed of our own destruction is in that first step that we take. That certainly applies to World War II. So here's Hitler. He's going to kill six million Jews. But do you know how many Germans died in his attempt to do that? 24 million. Mathematically, that is four times the amount. That's what people don't talk about. That's what you don't hear a lot about. He killed six million Jews, but he spared 24 million of his own doing it. I don't know of any general in their right mind that would take those kind of odds. Any leader other than a satanic madman that would take those kind of odds. Let me hasten and move on. I'll get off of that because I know that's too much for some of you. Listen, verse 21, I have not sent these prophets, listen to me, by way of the Spirit of God. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to both unbeliever and believer alike. I have not sent these prophets, the Lord is saying, Yet they ran, I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Now here is your defining marker in verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel, remember when I read 18? Remember when I read, <clears throat> the Lord is acting as <clears throat> a prosecutor there in verse 18? And he asked, for who have stood in the counsel of the Lord and have perceived and heard his word, who have marked his word and... Heard it, question marks. Remember, he laid that out like a prosecutor in a courtroom. Well, here's your answer. Here's the answer to the charge. How do we know we're sitting under an apostate leader? Or if we're listening to an apostate leader, unbelievers, and both unbelievers and believers like, how do we know if we're under an apostate leader? Listen to what the Lord gives you as your defining marker. But if they had stood in my counsel... Okay, and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Is that not clear enough? Is that not forensically and laconically and empirically clear enough? Pick a word, get on it. It all means clear. Is that not clear enough, believer and unbeliever? If you have, if you have a word from any mouthpiece and they are not turning you from your evil way and the evil of your doings as I am right now, you have a false prophet and an apostate mouthpiece. And I don't care if they call themselves sister, brother, mother, father, political leader, politician, hairdresser, uh, uh, you know, priest, father, church, reverend, doctor, bishop, pastor, elder, deacon, evangelist, usher. I don't care what they call themselves. If they are not turning you from your evil way and the evil of your doings, and this does not apply to the un, to the believer, this strictly applies to the unbeliever, because we in the believing side, we know that we are to judge ourselves, that we not be judged with the world. Come on, all my brothers and sisters, I can hear you shouting across the world right now, because you know the word of the Lord. Listen to me, all you unbelievers. If you got somebody not turning you with their word from the evil of your doings and from the evil of your ways, you you have an a false you have an apostate shepherd and a false prophet and i don't care what their title or their relation to you is let's get it down in our spirits now as i'm the lord wanted me to reiterate that i already taught on this before but he wanted me to do it again so i'm going to obey now let's go to zechariah the ninth chapter and we're going to finish up here all right now 
Bishop, I remember us being in Zechariah. Yes, you do, because we did a teaching series, and we went through the 8th chapter of Zechariah, the 10th chapter, as well as the 13th chapter of Zechariah. So that's why you might remember it for all of you who have been following us. Well, now the Lord's led us back in Zechariah again. We got some more work to do here. So now we're in Zechariah, the 9th chapter. And now I'm going to give a series of prophetic utterances as the Lord has given them to me for all of us. Now, the Bible says, we, and I gave you the 9th through the 12th verse, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Now, remember I taught the principle uh, some time ago. Um, it might have been right around um, Heaven's uh, Master Builder. It might have been right around um, uh, Heaven's Master Builder Part 9. I'm sorry about that. Had a little uh, technical difficulty there. Um, hopefully, uh, it will hold so I can finish this. So, uh, right around that series, uh, I taught a principle that the Holy Ghost uh, put forth for us that... Uh, that we are able to look at the Word of God like a blueprint. And what that allows us to do is sometimes to extract certain names out, remove, place them to the side for a moment, place our own names in there of our nation, of us, our, you know, personal name, whatever the case may be, so that we can personalize the text to us, so that we can understand that the Lord is talking to us and not necessarily the given name that is established in the text. Because the all script, you said, Bishop, how are we able to do that? And I and I stated this before, but I'll reiterate it again. Since we're in the spirit of we're we're in a spirit of reiteration here uh, uh, in this in this text. So the reason we can do that is because the Bible gives us a seal that says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and in righteousness. Uh, you know that we may uh, be made spiritually mature. So and I'm paraphrasing for understanding. So we the reason we can do this is because that all Scripture is written, and then the Bible also says it's written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world have come. Ammonition means our example, our teaching, our admonishment. Example, clear picture, blueprint, if you will, is another word. And I love the word blueprint, okay? So it's written as a blueprint for us. So here we have Zion. But you know who he's really talking to? He's talking to the church. And he tells us to rejoice greatly. I can hear my brothers and sisters the world over shouting right now. Church believers, he's telling us to rejoice greatly. Rejoice greatly. And, and and as we've been teaching along in this series, I gave you a myriad of reasons why we should be rejoicing. Don't have time to rehearse them again. You have to go back and watch if you haven't already. If you have already, that's why probably why I can hear all you shouting in the spirit right now. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout. Okay, now we're really kicking it up a notch. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and a colt, the foal of an ass. Now, this is a messianic prophecy that has been fulfilled, that has been fulfilled in the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, it acts as a blueprint. So it was just, it was not just <clears throat> applicable to the time when Jesus came in his first coming. It is applicable all the way down up into and including and through his second coming. So what the Lord wanted me to prophetically utter here, we are getting ready not many days from now to come to a place where the Lord is going to draw nigh to his people in the spirit in a way that we have not previously experienced. I mean so real that it will be so palpable, it will make the hair on the back of our neck stand up. He is going to draw so near to his people, every blood-washed believer. I, he is, he has certified me. He said, son, I am going to move so close to the earth realm, so close that all the nations of the world will be able to sense my presence and all of this tomfoolery that's going on right now, confusion, all this foolishness. It is getting ready to drop dead. We are going to reckon it that it is getting ready to be mortified. Rejoice, believers. Our King Jesus is getting ready at the commandment of the Father to move so close to the earth realm. Because remember what I said, we're in the prophetic glimpse of the time, prophetic timeline, Matthew 24, pro prophetic glimpse of the prophetic timeline, which gives us a glimpse into not just the time of the tribulation, because we won't be here, but we need a glimpse so we can teach and preach in our time, and we can make these videos for their time. And the Lord pr has promised me that he is going to preserve these platforms and videos so they can pre, so they can go to that time he's going to preserve these videos so they can reach those in that time now 
Listen. We're also getting a glimpse of the millennial reign. And in the millennial reign, the king comes back to the earth with ten thousands upon ten thousands upon ten thousands to an innumerable number of his saints. Listen to what the spirit is saying to his church. Listen to what the spirit is saying to us. He is telling us to rejoice greatly and shout. As we're coming into 2021, we are going to have a shout in our spirit, but the rest of the unbelieving world is not. And that's okay. I said in our last teaching, I set that up for you. If you missed it, go back and listen to it. You need that word down in your spirit. And I, I lay out for you why you must shout and why you must have confidence and why you must, must not feel any type of negative way about your shout and about your confidence and about your boldness as a lion and about your joy. You must not allow any spirit, angelic or human darkly to take your confidence from you in the things of the Lord and in his spirit and in his kingdom. You must not do it. That's a command. He's not asking us it's not a suggestion to us that is his royal command to his children we got to get that thing let it sink deep down in our in our spirits if it's not already there now listen to what the lord's going to do for all of you unbelievers believers you better get ready to shout because we know the harvest is coming and here's how it's going to come okay now listen verse 10 and i will cut off the chariot from ephraim these are battle horses these are battle chariots Listen forensically, pay careful attention through here. And the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall speak peace unto who? The heathen. He shall speak peace unto who? Say it with me. The heathen. He shall speak peace unto who? The heathen. Who is the heathen? All you unbelievers. Maybe even watch me right now or watch this video in the future. He's talking to all you unbelievers. You are the heathens he's referring to. He's not calling you names and neither am I. It refers to your spiritual uh, disposition. Heathen is translated secular. All, secular is translated as all of you who are outside of the holy kingdom of God. Secular means to be without the holy. To without of the holy or outside of the holy. You're not inside of the holy. Meaning the kingdom of God. Okay? Now. It says, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth, which means the Lord's going to move so close, close to this earth realm not many days now. That's why, believer, we need to be shouting, and unbeliever, you need to get some respect. If you had any good sense, you need, you need to get some fear in your spirit. And, and get yourself over here, and, and you need to fall on your face and repent as quickly as possible. Because when the king gets here, every knee's going to bow, and every tongue's going to shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You won't have any choice but to bow. So you might as well go on ahead and do it now and save yourself the trouble. But and listen, I preached this for 27 years. Do it willingly or do it unwillingly, but you shall bow. You shall confess. Get it in your spirit. Okay? Now, <clears throat> verse 11 as for thee also, by the blood of thy co covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. This is a reference to the new covenant, to the blood shed of the Lord Jesus Christ, which establishes the new covenant. The Lord is saying, by my blood, by my blood of the new covenant, by my blood, which establishes your salvation and your redemption, unbeliever, I'm going to bring you out of your waterless dungeons. That's what pits, the pit wherein is no water, is translated in the New Living Translation. It is translated as waterless dungeons. Now, fasten your seatbelt, believers, in case you didn't have this revelation or this understanding. Unbeliever, fasten your seatbelt, because listen, quite frankly, if you got some sense, all of us on both sides can rejoice. Now, the Lord is saying... <clears throat> Simply, what is stated in Acts 4, there is n neither is there salvation in any other, the apostle preached. For there is none other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. It is the name of Jesus Christ. And what this is your Old Testament version of that New Testament passage of Scripture. Now, what the Lord is saying through the blood of the New Covenant, the New Testament of grace, unbeliever, 
I am going to bring you as a both a spiritual summit. You are even going to be natural prisoners. You back up and you go to uh, that series, Wicked Council, and you catch uh, uh, Heaven's uh, Master Builder Part 10, 11, and even go back to 9. Some of you are getting ready to be natural prisoners, so don't you fool yourself. Okay, that's why I'm saying you better take warning here. We got to take heed and stop playing around, unbelievers, because it's about to get saucy. I know you thought, I know you was hoping for something good in 2020. I got news for you. 2021 is going to be much like 2020, and it's going to get kicked up a notch. And if you still refuse to repent the world over, 2022 is going to be even worse. 2023 is going to be even hotter. And the Lord has showed me by 2023, many of you will be running out like out of a burning building. We won't even have room for all of you on this side, all right? And I don't mean in the kingdom, I mean in the buildings, in the church buildings. That's why we're online right now, because the Lord is leading us to where he wants us to go. Now, <clears throat> so by the blood of the new covenant, I've sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. And again, I'll state again in the New Living Translation, that is out of the waterless dungeons. Now, you know what waterless dungeons refers to? It refers to your spirit, unbeliever. Your spirit right now is a waterless dungeon. You say, why is that significant? In case believers didn't know, listen carefully to what the spirit is teaching here so you can give this to somebody else. The word of God is free. You don't need my permission. Just use it. I don't care about none of that. I never have. This word belongs to our father. Nobody has a copyright on it. If you think you do, you're fooling yourself, okay? Now, your spirit, unbeliever, has become like a waterless dungeon. Now, what is water a symbol for? The Holy Ghost. <clears throat> this is how we know. Listen to the master teacher, the Holy Ghost, here for a minute. Your spirit, unbeliever, has become has become in as fast uh, 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 denigrating into a waterless dungeon, which simply means that you are void of the Holy Spirit in your spirit. You are not indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the Lord refers to your spirit as a waterless dungeon. You don't have the moisture of the Holy Ghost. That is a anthrop anthropological metaphor to describe that the whole when the Holy Spirit comes in, namely when Jesus is standing at the well, all you believers know the scripture, and he's talking to the Samaritan woman at the well, <clears throat> he says to her, if you knew who was talking to you, you would ask me for water that you never thirst again. He is not referring to physical and natural water. He is, although they are standing by a physical, natural well, we do understand. Let's be, let's be wise here and let's be spiritually mature. He is not talking about natural water and natural wells with this woman. He is talking about spiritual water, uh, the metaphor used for the Holy Spirit. So here's the prophetic utterance, believer, and this is why we should be shout. Not many days after the Lord has spanked the unbeliever for a good while, if they don't repent, soon as you repent, you're out. So that's individual and that's nationally. So just because the nations have repented doesn't mean the individuals can't. Listen, unbelievers, get some wisdom here. Just because our leaders have repented don't mean you can't get over in this ark of safety. It just means you'll be in and they'll be out. And if they get some sense and they repent, then they'll be over here and then all of this will cease. But until our, every man acknowledges the Lord, <clears throat> there's going to be a big holy spanking going on for the next three years to complete a four-year period that the Lord has shown his prophets. So you know what we can call this? The College of Hard Knocks. And all you unbelievers are going through the College of Hard Knocks, and you got a four-year degree that you're getting ready to get. Get it down in your spirit. I know you don't like it. I know you think it's uncomfortable, but it's the knife of a holy surgeon coming to cut all that foolishness out that's keeping you rebellious, hard-hearted, and stiff-necked. All of you who are on with me, listen to me. Let's begin to share these videos because you know this is powerful and profound teaching. And if you don't, you don't have a deep revelation of the Holy Ghost. We got to share these videos. I need these videos shared because, listen, I don't care what these people think about me. You Listen, X me out, turn me off, cut the screen off, just hear my voice so you can get the word of the Lord. I don't care about fame. I don't care about fortune. I've never cared about any of that. I pastor churches where I didn't get no check and didn't ask for one. Wasn't concerned about one. Okay, and even the ones I passed are where I got a check, they weren't that much anyway for me to be concerned about. Okay, the Lord's always taking care of my needs. So if you ask anybody that knows me, 27 years, I started my 28th year, uh, the, the, when we crossed this threshold into the new year, that I'm working on my 28th year now, okay, of ministry. And let me tell you something, I have, I have preached the unadulterated word of God, and that's why I don't care about filthy lucre or money, as the apostle Peter wrote, so I could get the unadulterated word of God to us. That's why I got a little sass. That's why I got great boldness because i don't care about your money you can't bribe me you can't
can't pay me off. I'm going to preach this word of fire and I don't care who likes it, who don't like it, like it, do like it, don't like it, whatever, it doesn't matter. I made my face like Flint. I know that I'm called in the same spirit like the prophet Jeremiah. Listen, we are coming to root out, pull down, destroy, and, 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 and to throw down. Then we're going to build and plant. Come on, Jeremiah, the first chapter. You haven't read it? Go and read it. Uh, you got some homework then, okay? So, all of you unbelievers... You are these water, your spirit is this water, these waterless dungeons that the Lord is referring to. But here's the shout, believer and unbeliever. Not many days from now, the Lord's going to move close into the earth that we won't visibly see him, but we, his presence will be so palpable like we've never experienced before. And then what's going to happen, the Lord has promised to pour out his spirit upon all flesh so that bringing to pass the word of the Lord, and I taught on this in the last, uh, in our, in our, uh, 13 period of sharing, the Lord's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And listen to me, it is going going to be greater it is going to be a double portion greater than in the days of the Acts 2 Pentecostalistic Pentecostalist uh, Pentecostalistic experience, excuse me. And so please understand this. He's going to pour out his spirit. So here's the shout, unbeliever. Even though you're a waterless dungeon right now, many of you, and, and I don't say that loosely or glibly, many of you are waterless dungeons right now, but here's where I want to shout for you. Not many days from now, you won't be. Lord's going to pour out his spirit in your in your spirit. And let me tell you something, baby. I don't know of any one of my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ where the spirit of God came into us. And it wasn't a dynamic and a radical experience unlike anything you will ever experience so much. So here's the mark of the Lord told me to give you. And I've been giving it to people for 27 years all around the country and outside of the country. When the Holy Ghost comes in you, unbeliever, you won't have need that any man tell you that that's what's happened to you. That's how radical. That's how awesome that's how dynamic and that's how profoundly and prolifically powerful his presence is when he comes in you he will shake you down to your spiritual socks baby you think you listen michael jackson and Frank, uh, fred astaire won't have nothing on your moods when he comes into your spirit baby you will dance before the lord like king david did he the bible said he danced out his kingly robes he was dancing <clears throat> so hard before the lord and that will be you not many days from now that's why i want to shout for you you. Listen, the Bible says the angels rejoice in heaven over one sinner that repents, and now many of you are getting ready to repent. An untold number, we won't even be able to count you the world over. So I know the angels and all of us in the body of Christ and the great cloud of witnesses and the four and twenty elders casting down their golden crown. Boy, they are shouting in heaven right now, and we are shouting and rejoicing in the body of Christ. That's why, believer, in verse 9, the Lord's commanding us, rejoice greatly and shout. Because we're getting ready to add to the kingdom. Listen, we're getting ready to get a latter rain that's going to be far greater than the former rain. Miracles, signs, and wonders the Lord has promised me are going to begin to move. And we're going to see them with our physical eyes. And this is going to be stuff that the, the eye hasn't seen, nor the ear has heard. Neither has it entered into our hearts the things that the Lord has prepared for those that love him. Listen to me, believer. We're getting ready to unbeliever. We're believer and unbeliever. We're getting ready to see magnanimous miracle signs and wonders that are absolutely going to blow your socks off. Won't nobody be getting high? Won't nobody need alcohol? Won't nobody need to be popping prescription drugs, baby? Because you're going to be so high in the Holy Ghost, you ain't never going to want to come down and come back. I wish I had some Holy Ghost help up in here for my brothers and sisters, and I know I do because I can hear you shouting in the Spirit, and the Holy Ghost is with me. You know, I don't know why preachers, we say that all the time. I think it just feels good to our spirit, and it feels like a wonder deep down in my soul because I know I have some help. I have the greatest help of all with me. I have a great cloud of witnesses even in heaven looking down over us, praising the Lord on our behalf while we continue the work that they started so long ago. Listen to me. Verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. And that's where the Lord wanted me to talk. To, uh, that is what my thought is for this period of sharing. Prisoners of hope. You say, Bishop, why did you wait so long to hold it? I waited so long to hold it deliberately because I have a prophetic utterance I want to share with us all, and I didn't want to pop the lid too early. Listen, the thing that the Lord has laid on my heart is you are prisoners of hope. You unbelievers, you're not just prisoners, you're prisoners of hope. In other words, even though you're prisoners bound in your spirit right now, there is absolute eternal, there is absolute infinite, there is absolute 
our Father in heaven so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that if you would believe in his Son, you should not perish and have everlasting life. Oh, get it down in your spirit, unbeliever. You don't have to stay a spiritual captive and a spiritual prisoner. Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Listen, to he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto all that mourn in Zion to give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that you might be called uh, trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified hope. You prisoners of hope, the Lord has anointed his servants, his believers all over the world. And it doesn't matter what our office is. He has anointed every blood-washed, born-again believer to bring a message of hope to you unbelievers. And I'm bringing it to you right now, front and center. You prisoners of hope, you waterless dungeons, not many days from now, the Lord's going to fill you with his spirit down in your socks, baby. And I'm going to tell you right now, your life is going to radically change. Your children are going to radically change. Your households are going to radically change. Your businesses are going to radically change. Your thinking and your spirit and your spiritual power and your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding, your confidence in yourself, your confidence in your fellow man, your confidence is going to go to an exponential level. Get it down in your spirit. Not many days from now, you prisoners of hope will be prisoners no more. You will just be in hope. Oh, I got to calm my little spirit hit down here because I feel like flying up out of here and then I won't finish this off for us. Listen, I'm preaching so strong my sinuses are going and I don't even care. I'm going to keep drinking this water till they get under control. Listen, turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. That is not just to unbelievers. That is to you, unbelievers. The Lord, not many days from now, when he fills you with this spirit, he is going to render double unto you. He is going to not only restore your spirit, he is going to restore your natural life. He said, For he said, I will restore unto you your natural years that the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm have eaten my great army, which I sent amongst you. Yes, he sent the army amongst you. Yes, he had to give you a spiritual whooping so you could wake up out of your little childish state and your little complaining state and your little backbiting state and your little whiny state. Yes, he had to take his belt off and spank your little unbelieving tail. But not many days from now, he's going to heal your little unbelieving tail up. You're going to be believing. You're going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he said, I'm going to give you, render unto you a double portion. Not only am I going to restore your spiritual life internally, I'm going to restore your external life because it is getting ready you say bishop why would he have to do that because most of you you're unbelieving so it's indicative that your spirit's already destroyed destroyed is the greek word to mean to make of none effect you have no effect in the kingdom so your spirit is already destroyed and many of you over 2020, many of you, your natural lives were destroyed. You lost people. People died close to you. People you know died. So many people. Listen, and you say, Prophet, did anybody die around you? Absolutely 150% they have. I mean, dropping like flies. People in my family dropping like flies. And I don't mean my immediate family. We've been protected. I'm talking about folks that tend to, you know, not say much to you and stay way over there and do what they want to do and act like they just skipped over the preacher. You know, they, you know, these are the ones that 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 I send the messages to to give them hope and you know they don't ever look at them or they turn them off they watch them for about 30 seconds to get the introduction then as soon as I start preaching about hell they turn it off listen to me and I start preaching about judgment they don't even get to the part where I'm preaching about good news and some of them don't even I start preaching about good news in the beginning they go through the introduction don't even make it to that that's the folks I'm talking about all right so many of them at that distance, oh yeah, baby, they're dropping all around. A lot of folks I went, I was talking to one of my buddies, we went to high school together, and he was informing me that about three or four friends I didn't even know uh, were brutally murdered here uh, in Detroit. So, listen to me. Uh, yeah, they've been dropping like flies all around me. Uh, listen, even strangers, folks I didn't even know having conversation with me, and all their folks are dropping. Listen. 
Let me tell you something. Just because we're believers, just because we're prophets, we are exempt from this happening to us. But we're not exempt from seeing it happen to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. You go back to our, our 13th period of Sharon, Heaven's Master Builder, and I lay that out for you. Only with our eyes shall we see and behold, shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. However, syllogistic reasoning shows us that we will see, we will behold and see it. We're not going to be in it. We're not in it with you. Uh, we're not being touched by it. But uh, we are seeing it, and it's not pleasant. It's not fun. Nobody's taking joy in this unbeliever. We want you to hurry up and repent and get over here so we can stop this madness. And can I tell you something? You can keep trying all your vaccines and everything you want. But I'm going to give you, uh, listen to me. I'm going to. The Holy Ghost told me to give it to you if you didn't already know. Listen, the only thing that's going to stop the coronavirus is if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. The Lord said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Your greatest vaccine is not the vaccine for the coronavirus, unbeliever. Your greatest inoculation against this curse word that fell on you in 2020 is the word of God. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. When you humble yourself and you get on your face, you won't even need to take that vaccine. And if you got any sense, you won't. Some of the preachers are scared to tell you. I'm not scared to tell you. Do not take it. You don't need it. Many of you are going to die from it. Fool around. I laid that out in one of our past teachings. Don't fool with it. You don't need it. I'm telling you, all you need to do is repent and have faith. And listen, even as the grain of a mustard seed, and the Lord will keep all evil and plagues from you. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. Come on. I'm telling you. Been exposed all kind of people. Nothing. I'm not going to look for it, but I'm telling you, sometimes it finds nothing. Divinely protected. Wife, same thing. Children, same thing. Come on. And I'm not the only one. All you believers know. All you that trust in the word, you know. So you're going to have double. Now, let me share this one last thing with you. And then I feel the Holy Ghost allow me to rest in my spirit here. And we're going to be done. Turn you to the stronghold. Now, you say, Bishop, where's the stronghold? Yeah, Nahum 1 and 7. The Lord is a stronghold in the day of trouble. Hello, boom, there it is, the Lord is Nahum, the prophet Nahum, pick up your Bible and go to Nahum, first chapter 7 verse, you want to know what the stronghold is? Turn you to the stronghold, the prophet Zechariah said, your stronghold is the Lord, the Lord is a stronghold in the day of trouble, and the because of that verse is, he knows them that put their trust in him, that's your vaccine, unbeliever. Put your trust in him. That's your vaccine. That's your out to this perverted word. Mm -hmm. That these false prophets spew to you. I'm not saying the coronavirus is not real. I've never stated that. I knew from the beginning it wasn't a joke. And it was real because I had prophetic word. I had preached for 27 years before we got to 26 to be exact. Well, now 27 I preached for 26 years before we got to the coronavirus that the wrath of the Lord was coming. I said it in private conversations and public teachings, preachings, and lecturings. I kept saying it, and here we are now. We're in the first year. We got three more to go. So we're j listen, you unbelievers are just freshmen in college right now in this school of hard knocks. But this year, now you done crossed into your sophomore year. Listen, you bet this is the one school that it's okay to drop out from. I said it. It's super highly and egregiously inflammatory, and you already know I'm not taking it off the table. You are in your sophomore year, but let me tell you something. This is the college you want to drop out of and never return to. Feel free to drop out. And run into that stronghold, Nahum 1 and 7. The Lord is a stronghold when? In the day of trouble. What does he know? Those that put their trust in him. Unbelievers, you trusted him today. I thank the Lord for all my believing brothers and sisters all across the world. All my family and friends across the world. Even my enemies of the cross run into this ark of safety called the word of God and the kingdom of God. Wow, you have a chance so you can avoid the lake of fire in the second death. According to Revelations 19, 20 and the 21st chapter. 
All right, my brothers and sisters, listen, I love you. I said it before, and I'll continue to say it, and I'll continue to harp on it. I love you divinely because I tell you the truth, the unadulterated truth of the word of God, without sugarcoating and water nothing down, and I don't pull any punches. This is the knife of the surgeon. Mm Mm-hmm. This is that holy castor oil going down, cleaning all that mess out of all you unbelievers. Mm -hmm. This is the knife of that holy surgeon cutting all them cancerous cells, spiritual cells out of your mind so you can be free and live holy and live spiritually healthy, not just naturally healthy. All right? I love all you in the spirit of the Lord because I tell you the unadulterated truth. I'm signing off for now. I bid you a good day.